how do I know that this triangle with two known sides and one angle is our ambiguous case? Well, I'm going to start by thinking of the angle. I'm going to put that 34.5 degrees down this way. Next, I'm going to put A equals 10. It could have been on either side of angle B, but I'm going to make it easier by putting it up there on the top. That leaves me with side B. Now, side B has to be across from angle B, so let's go ahead and draw it in here. Now, you'll notice that the given information is in order, an angle, a side, and then a side. So this is my angle side side case, which results in two possible triangles. Here's the easy way to remember. The initials of angle side and side happen to spell S. So this is the S case, two triangles, you're welcome. Let's go ahead and finish working on this one because there's a second triangle we need to identify. We don't know the length of our bottom side, so I could actually have taken side B and swung it to the left and drawn it this way. This gives me another triangle. Now let's go ahead and just start by looking at the larger of the two triangles. We're gonna call that triangle one. In this triangle, we need to find angles A and C and side C. Notice that angle A here is an acute angle. That's gonna become important. In our second triangle, the smaller of the triangles, we still need to find angles A and C and side C, but in this triangle, they're gonna be very different values. So let's go ahead and give them subscripts of two and I want you to take a look at that angle A. It is larger than 90 degrees, so it's an obtuse angle. Let's go back to that first triangle and the law of sines. As I'm applying the law of sines, I wanna pick up a side and an angle across from each other. So I wanna pick up angle B and side B, and then the only other piece of information that I know is side A. So I need to pick up side A and angle A. Let's go ahead and put this together in our law of sines. So I've got the sine of A over side A, which is 10, is equal to the sine of our angle B, which is 34.5, over side B, which happens to be six. Now I'm solving for angle A. So I wanna start by isolating sine A. Let's multiply that 10 on the other side. So I get sine A by itself. So sine A is equal to 10 times the sine of 34.5, all divided by six. Now in order to get a all by itself, I really need to apply a sine inverse here. So the sine inverse is gonna be applied to both sides, the left and the right-hand side. So sine inverse of As I do this, the sine inverse and the sine cross each other out, and I do end up with one version, anyway, of angle A, and I can get that by putting this into my calculator. Now, there's one little problem here, and that's the range or the possible outputs that sine inverse will give you, and it will only give you a value between negative 90 degrees or negative pi halves if you're working in radians, up to 90 degrees. So it's only going to give you acute angles, and that's exactly what we're going to get out of our calculator. The very first thing I want you to do is make sure you're in degrees. So I'm going to click on mode, and my radian and degree line is the fourth line down. I am in degrees, and I know because it's highlighted. If you're not, arrow over to it and then hit enter so it's highlighted. Let's quit here by hitting second followed by mode and I'm ready to type this in. So I wanna grab that sine inverse. It's the second of sine. I'm using my TI calculator here. And then I'm gonna type it in exactly like I see it. So 10 times the sine of 34.5 parentheses and then divided by six, close our parentheses. And we end up with just like we expected, an angle measure between negative 90 and positive 90 degrees. So we get that A is approximately, I'm gonna round that to one decimal place and call that 70.7 degrees. And 70.7 would live right about here. 
but I know that there's a second value that has this same sine value, which means it would have the same y value. So it would live over here. I'm doing my best to draw everything nice and straight. Okay, so it would live right there. So to find that second value, I would take this would be for a sub two. This would be for my second triangle. So we're gonna hang on to this for a minute. It would be 180 minus that 70.7 degrees. And if I go ahead and do 180 minus 70.7, I end up with what's gonna be that obtuse angle for the second triangle of 109, 109.3. Now I'm going to hang on to that 109.3 degrees for triangle number two. I really want to finish up here triangle number one with that 70.7 degrees. So this angle right here is 70.7 degrees. Back up in our triangle, we still need to find angle C and side C. Let's do angle C first. I know that the sum of all of my angles, A plus B plus C is equal to 180 degrees. So to get angle C, I'm just gonna take 180 and subtract those other two angle measures. So 180 minus my 34.5 minus my 70.7 is going to give me angle C. And that leaves me with 74.8. So that is angle C. So angle C is 74.8 degrees. All we've got left now is side C. We want to use the law of sines one more time. As I'm looking at that law of sines, I've got, of course, still angle B and side B. I'm going to use that as one of my fractions. And then for the other fraction, I need to use angle C and side C so I can solve for that C. So we've got the sine of, let's do our B's first. 34.5 divided by side B, which is six, is equal to the sine of angle C, and that is 74.8, divided by side C, which is what we are looking for. Now I need to do some cross multiplying, cross multiplying, cross multiplying, and I end up with C times the sine of 34.5, is equal to six times the other sign. So six times the sine of 74.8. I need to divide off that sine of 34.5. That's gonna leave me with C. So sine of 34.5 divided by the sine of 34.5. Five. Okay, so if I cross these signs out, C is going to equal or be approximate because I've been rounding here that value. Let's get this into our calculator. Six times the sine of 74.8 parentheses divided by the sine of 34.5 and I get that side C, which is gonna be, if I'm rounding, it's gonna be 10.2. So C is approximately 10.2. Let me go back up to that triangle and I can erase a bunch of this now because I've got everything and I can fill in that last value of 10.2. Now we're ready for triangle number two. Let's go back up and grab that second angle A. So A sub two was 180 minus 70.7, which gives us that obtuse angle greater than 90 degrees of 109.3. I'm going to add that angle measure to our triangle here, 109.3. Three, and we're gonna find the other angles in exactly the same order that we finished off triangle number one. So that means that I wanna start with finding angle measure C. To find angle measure number C, and this is C sub two, right? My other angle C, that's gonna be 180 minus my other two angle measures. So I've got a 34.5 and I've got a 109.3 and we get angle C 
C's measure of 36.2. So C sub two, it's about, because I'm rounding, but I'm just gonna put equals, um, 36.2 degrees. Let's go ahead and add that to our triangle. So 36.2 degrees, which just leaves side C. And just like we did before, we've already laid the groundwork, just like we did before, we're gonna use the law of sines here. And to use the law of sines, I'm gonna pick up that given information, angle B and side B is one of my fractions, and I'm looking for side C, so I need to pick up angle C and side C for my other fraction. Okay, let's put that together. I'm gonna to start with my Bs. So the sine of 34.5, divided by side B, which is six, is equal to the sine of angle C. We just found that, that was 36.2, all divided by side C, or we'll call that C sub two. Let's go ahead and cross multiply. Remember your goal here is to solve for C. So I end up with C sub two times that sine of 34.5, is equal to six times the other sign. So the sign of 36.2. All I need to do is to divide off the sign of 34.5. 34.5, do the same thing on the other side. Again, it feels super familiar. Same steps, different values. So this gives me C sub two. So my second side, C, is equal to what I've got here. Let's get this into our calculator. So 6 times the sine of 36.2. Close the parentheses, divided by the sine of 34.5, 34.5. Enter, you don't need those parentheses. And I get 6.3 if I'm rounding. So about 6.3. And that's that last value that we needed for triangle number two. You are doing so good. Law of cosines is next.